Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can build your own mini fridge. Let's get started. So you're going to need a insulated container. For this I'm using a styrofoam box, a small 12 volt fan, a Peltier plate, 12 volt power supply, a small aluminum block, a large heat sink, and some heat sink compound. So first we're going to take our heat sink and spread a little bit of compound on it. Next we're going to take our 12 volt Peltier plate and stick it right in the middle and then move it around while pressing down so it makes good contact with the heat sink. Now we're going to make a hole in our container and put an aluminum block through. Now we're going to spray a little bit of heat sink compound on it and then we're going to take the larger heat sink with the Peltier plate on it and stick it right on top. And the same with the heat sink and the Peltier plate, we're going to move it around a bit so it makes good contact with the aluminum block. Now that we're done with the large heat sink, we're going to need to put a fan on it because it actually gets hot. For the fan, I'm going to be using a relatively high power fan, about 4.5 watts, and we're just going to put it right on top. Now that everything is pretty much done and the unit will properly function, we need to wire it up. So we're basically going to connect the two red wires together and the two black wires together. Then we're going to connect the 12 volt power supply to these leads right here. Now we're going to plug it in and see if it works. I don't know what was wrong with this 5 amp power supply, but when I turned it on, as you can see, the, the fan just turned on for a split second and then shut off, which means it's probably too much power for this little guy. So the difference between the two power supplies is this is a limited power supply, which means basically it's only going to put out 12 volt 1.5 amps. And the last one basically cuts out when it goes above 12 volt 10 amps. And this thing was drawing about 15 amps. So this one will only run at 1.5 amps, but we should still see it cool down. So let's wire this one up. I'm actually going to plug it in because I have no clue which one is plus and minus. So it turned on and it's working at full capacity. Now we're going to see if it cools down on the other side. Here I've got my infrared thermometer and this basically tells me the temperature of anything without even having to touch it. Wow, that's actually starting to get warm already. Look at that. It's already 63 degrees. And the ambient temperature is 68. So let's plop this in the case right here and we'll see how cold it gets. Wow, did not expect that. Just a tip, do not leave exposed wires out with high voltage. Yeah, that was fun. Almost just touched it again. After about 5 minutes, the heat sink is 86 degrees, and the internal block is 51 degrees. After about 10 minutes, the heat sink is 83 degrees, and the internal component is 48 degrees. After about 30 minutes, the heat sink is 80 degrees, and the internal block is 31. After one hour, the heat sink is 78 degrees and the internal has ice on it and is 27 degrees. A little bit of ice on this from the humidity in the air. So I think I'm going to turn this off, let this thaw out, clean it, and then I'm going to try putting a small layer of water on the bottom here and leaving it for a few hours to see if it will freeze the whole entire thing. There's a little bit of ice. So I've got a little bit of water in the box and now is the real test. Will this freeze it? Now we'll just wait. About an hour in, the heat sink is 86 degrees and the plate is 37. And the water is 50 degrees. About two hours in, the heat sink is 84 degrees, 
the plate is 30, 20, ooh. The plate is 27 degrees and the water is 45 degrees. So it's been about three hours and the heat sink is 85 degrees. The plate is 25 degrees and the water is 42 degrees. I really don't see much change and I think it's because the water is basically being cooled by the air that the Peltier plate cools, which is very inefficient. So I thought it would be better if we added more water until it touched the Peltier plate and that would make for a very good thermal exchange. And that will cool the water much, much, much faster. So it's been just barely a minute and the water is already 60 degrees. It has dropped 10 degrees. So I think this setup is working very well. So it's been about five hours and my battery is running extremely low. So I think I'm gonna unplug it soon, but I do see that there's a little bit of a crack there, which means there might be ice in here because when water freezes, it actually expands more and this was sitting flush before. So let's see. Moment of truth in three, two, oh wow. Really thin. It's all uh, frozen to the sides. Yeah, I don't, there's no uh, crystal growth of the ice down, so I don't think this was, yeah, that wasn't touching the water at all. But yeah, uh, I think it was just cooling down the air on top of it. But I'm impressed. This is a good sheet of ice. I'm gonna try to pull this thing up. I broke it again. Yeah, that's a, that's a good millimeter or so of ice. Can you see how cold the water is? I'll tell you it's cold from putting my hand in it. 35 degrees. Wow. This worked better than I expected it to. Although it did use a whole 10 amp hour battery. Freezing that much water. I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.